Hello, my name is Peyton Enfield. And I'm Julia Alday. We're from the Marianna High FFA chapter. Today we're going to be showing you our terrarium that we made and show you how to make your own, which is also known as a self-sustaining ecosystem. We have a pre-built one here, and I know you can't see it very well, but in the back we have a white and a nerve plant, or more can also be called a Fetonia argoniera. In the front we have a Begonia rex, just nicknamed rex, and in the back we have a Peperomia obtusifolia, or just terra firma. So the jars that we have here for our terrariums was given to us for free by this 92 year old lady that our FFA chapter did a community service project for her and did some yard work for her, so we are very thankful for that. To start off with our terrarium, we first added a foundational layer of pea gravel. Before placing the pea gravel into the said jar here, we had to thoroughly rinse the pebbles to remove any excess dirt. We did that by just simply putting the pebbles into some plastic pots and so that way we can just transfer them straight into the jar. Instead of using pea gravel, you could have used sea glass to be more appealing to the eye, but we just chose pea gravel out of convenience. So our next layer after our pea gravel would be landscaping fabric. We put that in between our next layer, which would be crushed charcoal and the pea gravel. You're going to want to cut it into a square resembling the shape of the jar and you're going to want to fit it in very snugly so that no soil can get through. She's going to line it up to get a similar shape. And it's okay if it's a little larger than the jar. If there's some excess on the side, that's fine. It'll just be better for no soil getting through. You're going to want to place that in. And you do it so that there's one side of the mesh fabric is black and one side is brown so it blends in with the two layers. After placing our landscaping fabric, we then place our lump charcoal that we crushed ourselves. The purpose of the crushed charcoal is to eliminate any odors and to prevent bacteria growth. You're going to want to wait until the charcoal cloud settles before adding in your soil and plants because otherwise you won't be able to see anything. But it is needed for keeping bacteria out. So we're just going to let that clear out. You can blow on it if needed to help it out a little bit. So after putting in our crushed charcoal, we then add potting mix before planting our plants. You can also use a funnel, but I'm just using my hands if your jar mouth is smaller than ours. You're going to want to put like three scoops, not that much, maybe a little less than I just put in because the soil is already on the plants you're putting in. Peyton is going to start by putting in a pink angel, cousin to the white Anne, as said before, is a Plutonia argonera. She's going to carefully remove it from the original pot, place it into its new home, get it arranged so its roots can take up very nicely. Next, she's going to get the croton plant, which can be very distinguished by its yellow and red leaves. Carefully remove that the same way. You can also call this a cododium vegetum. This one's a little bit bigger, so it takes a little bit more space up in the yes. jar. You're going to want to try and tuck it down very nicely. Next, she's going to grab her dragon fingers, doing the same with the pots. She's going to cut it at the top to release it, they tie it that way so it grows braided. This can also be called a braided Sensevira cylindrica and it will be acting as the centerpiece of our terrarium. She's 
just gonna nicely put it in, rearrange its original shape a little bit, break up some of the roots so that they can reform. And if you want to build your own, you might want to get some plants younger than this. Okay. So, once you have potted your plant, you will need to add some finishing touches to your terrarium to keep the circle of life moving. To do this, we added some Limburkina, also known as earthworms. You can also add springtails, which resemble termites, but they, both of them eat bacteria. And dead and, plant matter. Yeah, and dead plant matter. <laughs> just gonna want to place them in. You just only need just a couple, two or three, just to keep it moving. You know, you don't need too many. At the most, three. All right, just a few things about your terrarium once you have it complete and how you want it to be look, looking and everything like that. So for the next few days after your terrarium is done, you need to monitor it so that way there is not too much water inside of your terrarium. You should only see condensation on the glass jar in the mornings and evenings, as you can see here, the water collecting on the side because it is morning time. If your terrarium was to have too much condensation on the inside, all you really need to do is just open the lid and let it air out and you can just take a paper towel and wipe on the inside edges. These are tropical plants, so they prefer temperatures between 45 and 85 degrees Fahrenheit, so that's perfect for keeping them inside next to a warm window. We hope you learned a lot from this presentation and plan to build your own terrarium. Thank you.